All right. So welcome to the first I Am Great live experience. I'm super excited to have you part of this. I'm Rob Cressy. And one thing that I want to do to start this out is we're all going to clap three times. And the reason for this is this aligns us and we can all feel each other even over the internet. And it's going to really help set our intentions. So if you want to all do this together, we're going to go one, two, three, and then we're going to clap three times and then we're going to rub it in to set the intention. All right. One, two, three. And then you rub that in. And this is something that I actually learned from a musician named Paul Isaac. He lives in Florida or in Hawaii. He's a really good vibes guy. And I saw him do that. And he always brings so much good energy. And I liked the way that he aligned all of us. Because even though we aren't all together, we are all present right here. So I wanted to thank you for showing up today. Uh, there is great power in showing up. And every day I have a quote of the day. And today it was, if you want to be the best, you have to do things that other people aren't willing to do. And that comes from Michael Phelps. And others weren't willing to show up for this live experience, but you were. So celebrate that because you are making yourself better. And one way that I start every conversation that I have is by sharing something awesome that happened in the last week. So what I want each of us to do is go around, I'm gonna unmute each of you and share something awesome that has happened in the last week. And Dawn, I'm gonna start with you. Hey everyone, so my name is Dawn and I'm currently in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, the weather has been great. So my awesome thing is that my running has improved, which running isn't necessarily super fun, but um, it's kind of my windshield time where I, where I clear my head. And so it was productive on all fronts. So I'm pretty excited about that. Awesome. That's amazing, Don. Uh, Drew, let's move over to you. Absolutely. So my name is Drew. I'm actually up in the capital region in New York. So not quite as warm as Charlotte, but you know, uh, awesome thing to happen. So I've been really pushing for uh, e-gaming. I've been doing a lot of e-gaming type stuff. And I actually, I'm on Twitch. Uh, and I just hit affiliate, which is the first step to start uh, monetizing that whole process. So that's pretty awesome. It was uh, been about two month process, but I got there. So that's pretty awesome. Congratulations. That's amazing. And Thank Nathaniel, you. we'll move this over to you. What's something awesome that happened in the last week? Um, for me, I went into my office for the first time in a while, and one of my student athletes actually got me a card saying thank you and everything for all I've done for them for the past few years, which was really cool because it's rare to see something like that. Ah, that is amazing. And one thing to take note of is uh, think about how that made you feel and the opportunity that you have to now do this for others. So sometimes a simple, kind gesture when you're on the receiving end, take note of that because now you can do that on uh, an opportunity for others. And for me, um, one awesome thing that happened in the last week is myself and my wife ran a half marathon that we self-created called the Bacon Half Marathon. Uh, we were supposed to run the Brooklyn Half Marathon in New York, uh, but it unfortunately got canceled. So. Since we continue to train, uh, we're down here in Sarasota right now, we took the opportunity to create our own version of a half marathon. And I'm very proud that uh, we were able to move forward and get it done. So that was the uh, awesome things that happened uh, this week. So uh, the reason I like to ask this question, and there's actually gonna be an action item associated with this. And the reason I ask, tell me something awesome that happened in the last week is because it allows you to learn something about somebody else where you're able to take the initiative. So throughout this call, we're going to have a series of action items. And one thing that I want you to do in the next week is to ask at least one person, tell me something awesome that happened to you in the last week, because this is a question that'll serve you in your ability to design interactions. So Nathaniel, the same way that you received that card from someone and it made you feel good, 
guess what? Very few other people ask others about themselves. So do that and use this as a tool to help you be more successful. Cool? So um, let's keep this party going. And what I wanna do now is set some expectations and rules for engagement for this first live experience. So number one, I want you to be present. This is a time to work on your personal development and mindset. Put your phone away, close the other browsers uh, on your computer, and doing this will allow you to get more out of this experience. Plus, all that stuff that's going on out there in the world, it's gonna still be there when you are done. But if you just focus on this, you're gonna have the opportunity to learn and grow today. And it's up to you to decide which path you wanna be on. Do you wanna just follow what's going on in the rest of the world? Or do you wanna take this time to say, you know what, I am going to be present right now and work on my own personal development. Because remember, this is for you. So give yourself that permission. And I wanna give two shout outs. We have Mike Raziel showed up, as did my man, Steve. So Steve, you know how this goes. Um, Tell us something awesome that happened in the last week for you. You there, Steve? I think you're muted or we're not hearing your sound. Not, I think you might, need to ch you might need to check your audio connection because we're not hearing you, but we will get back to you, Steve, in the interest of keeping this thing moving forward. So sound is down from Steve. All right, so number two thing uh, to set the expectations here. It's gonna be heavy note taking time. A big part of growth is retention. You'll hear some things that'll be new to you for the first time, or maybe this will be the 50th time that you hear something and it reactivates something for you. Either way, write it down. That way you can go back and review it. And I can tell you that this is one of the biggest keys for me in terms of success and the ROI you're gonna get on your time. And this is something that I learned from a guy named Emerson Sparks. And he said, Rob, one of the greatest ROIs you will ever get in your life is by taking book notes from the books that you read. And he said, think about this like riding a bike. When you learn to ride a bike, you jump on for the first time, but that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you become a BMX rider doing wheelies and stuff. No, you have to continually revisit the things over and over and over again. So your own personal development and the things that you learn is the same thing. So often we read a book or we hear something once and you're like, oh, that's really good. But we've all heard or seen when you go to a conference and you get all jazzed up and then one week later what happens, you didn't implement anything because it was a one-time pump and dump. Instead, when you write these things down, it gives you the opportunity to go back and revisit these things. So the same goes true for your own personal development. All right, number three. Let me see here, sorry about that. Number three, this live experience is interactive. You have the opportunity to be in dialogue, to ask questions and share thoughts. So one, I encourage you to have your video on, which most of you do. Uh, you can use the chat feature to ask questions or share thoughts or comment on things as we go. Don't just be a passive observer, ask thoughts, be a thought leader, be someone who sits in the front row, who asks the questions, because that question that's on your mind is actually something that might be on the mind of somebody else. And by doing this, not only are you helping yourself, but you're helping others. And you're also helping me by contributing to this experience. And this is a very big thing for a high performance mindset. To be the one to stand up in a conference and ask a question. If any of us have ever been there, and I can think specifically to a time where I was in a conference room of a thousand people and Mark Cuban was the keynote speaker. It was the Fantasy Sports Trade Association Conference years ago. And I love Mark Cuban. And who wouldn't want to ask Mark Cuban a question? 
but are we all willing to stand up in front of a room of a thousand people and ask Mark Cuban a question? And as uncomfortable as I was, I've learned over time to look that fear in the eyes and just stand up. And you're like, oh my God. So take that as something that you can always work on, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. It'll never get, it'll never not be uncomfortable, but your action will get more comfortable to you and you'll just get more used to living in action. Along these same lines, number four, this is a safe space for all of us. There is no judgment. Uh, one of my personal core values is yes and, and this is something that I learned at Improv at Second City. And what it really stands for is in improv, you're on stage with someone else or a group of other people, and you're there to support your teammates. So if all of a sudden I go like this and it's a bow and arrow, and then Don says, that's not a bow and arrow, dummy. That's a watermelon. It kills the scene. But instead, if I go bow and arrow, Don could go, oh, let me put the apple on my head. And boom, all of a sudden you're, you're adding to the scene. So with that same mindset, we're all in here as a team and the goal is to build each other up. So this is a safe space where there is no perfection. We're all about improvement. And then number five in the last part of this is implement at the speed of instruction. And this is something that I learned from Ed Milet. When I teach something, the standard is that you take action immediately following the call because that is the mindset of high performance, because we're gonna be stacking habits and routines and success mindsets on top of each other. And this is no different than the standard that Phil Jackson or Nick Saban would set for their championship teams. If you want positive change, then you must take action right away. You're only hurting yourself by not doing so. And think about it, is Nick Saban gonna to have to say something 10 times to his team? No, when he tells you once, he expects you to say, boom, coach, I got it, let's go. Because you are here to get better and that's how you get better. I'm not interested in excuses and neither should you be. I want action from you. So when we teach something, boom, you go, I write it down, all right, now let me take action on this. So those are sort of the ground rules of this. And with this live experience, it's gonna be broken down into a few parts. First, I'll teach some stuff. Number two, we'll be in dialogue. And then number three at the end, we're gonna do the Miracle Morning, which is a guided experience to help set your intentions for the day. Um, anybody have any thoughts or questions right out of the gate before we move things forward? If you want, you can unmute yourself or raise your hand. All right, otherwise, let's keep this party going. And remember, the chat is available for you um, to use as you would like. One second. All right, there we go. Cool. So what we're gonna talk about today is I'm gonna share five principles for upgrading your mindset. And these are based on the five core values of I am great. And those core values are positivity, accountability, action, growth, and initiative. And here's what you're gonna learn, how to build more momentum in your life, how to be happier and have more positivity, how to accomplish more in a way that is more like playing than working. And this is a very big, important distinction. Uh, the next thing that we're going to learn is, sorry about this, I'm just working through Zoom, uh, how to perform at a high level and then how to become a better version of yourself. So without further ado, let's get into this with number one, positivity. So I'm the leader of Team Good Vibes, but it has not always been that way. And for me, I've lived what I almost consider separate lives. So back in the day, uh, I used to do digital advertising sales for seven years, where I'm selling banner ads and text links and newsletters and things like that. I was great at it, but I didn't love doing it. And for me, my passion and my dream was always to work in sports and be creative. And seven years ago, I said, you know what? I would regret it for the rest of my life 
if I didn't give it a chance of making my dreams happen. So I quit my job and went all in on my dreams. And it was upon that moment that I went from making several six figures to zero dollars overnight. And when that happened, I quickly realized a lot of things. But one of them was on the positivity side. And actually, it's the inverse, the negativity side. Negativity did not serve me, and it does not serve you. Because as I thought about it, when you're all in on something, your life and what you want to accomplish, you say, I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting what I want. But guess what will stop you? Negativity. There's just so much of it. It's your own self-chatter the negativity of the world and the media and social media, um, the friends of the people around you who might be bringing you down. And I realized, wait a second, I no longer have time to dwell in negativity because that's gonna slow me down and actually hurt me from accomplishing my goals. So the same is true for yourself, that you wanna have as much positivity around you. And certainly I think this is an extremely important thing right now with everything that's going on in the world. Uh, so often people are like, Rob, you're such a positive guy. How in the world do you do it? Well, it's a conscious choice. Every single day when we all wake up, we have the opportunity to determine how we're gonna respond to situations. Does it mean that it's always easy? No, but the key to this is the awareness side of things. You need to make the conscious choice to say, you know what, I am someone who lives a life of positivity. So when something negative inevitably comes around your life, here's what you do. You shrug it off and you say, you know what? Not today. It does not serve me. And really, it can be that easy. Because what you need to be able to do is recognize this first. Because so often we let the negativity just sit around us and just seep in. And that's where those things can all of a sudden start building the negative momentum for yourself. Instead, you need to find a way to one, recognize it, you're like, oh, I'm noticing something negative. Once you realize that, you say, all right, what is one thing that I can do to reverse that negativity and turn something into a positive? So some easy examples that I like to do. One, you can change your environment. So for many of us working from home right now, um, it can be tough because we're just sort of, you almost feel like you're just doing the same day over and over and over again. So you know what? If you're feeling some sort of way that is negative, just get up and go outside. Do anything to change your environment. It's a very simple thing that you can continually go back to. Another thing that you can do is write down what you're feeling or thinking about. And I'm someone who's very big into journaling because what you wanna do is take the thoughts that are in your head and get them out of your head. And how do you get them out of your head? By writing it down. It's almost like your own version of being able to um, have a conversation with someone. And one thing that I actually say, which you can actually verbalize out loud, or you can write down yourself is, I am releasing this negative energy from me. And then I want you to believe it. So when I notice that I'm on tilt, and there's some negativity in my life, I'll be writing it down. And I'll actually say, I am releasing the negative energy from myself. And then you can almost like sit back and it's just like this weight that's lifted off your shoulders. And it's like, is it really that easy? Well, yes, it is really that easy if you allow it to be. So you let it go and you say, all right, well, now that that's gone, I'm moving on to the next positive thing. And the next thing you want to do with positivity is be intentional about creating positive inputs for yourself. So this can be music, people a group like this, affirmations and gratitude, because what you wanna do is positively reinforce yourself all of the time. So if we think about it right now, imagine the difference between having the news on all day, spewing negativity at you, as opposed to having music on that uplifts you or makes you feel good. Those are two completely different paths, but imagine how your day is gonna be like if you start to design your day in a life of positivity. So with this, here's your next action item. I want you to create one positive input for yourself. And I want you to visit it daily for the next week. So every day for the next week, whatever that is, whether it's a specific song 
or you write down an affirmation about yourself, or there's a certain person you enjoy being around or listening to their podcast. I want you to create one positive input for yourself and continually revisit it. And then sit there and as you do it, reflect on how that makes you feel. Because I think that's the thing is, I'm very big into being intentional and being aware. So the reason that we're doing this, for example, I listen to Bob Marley a lot or Good Vibes music and I do it when I'm showering. So I turn on that Bob Marley and all of a sudden I'm just sitting here dancing in the shower, having the time of my life. Well, guess what? It only took me doing that once to realize, oh, if I want to feel good, all I've got to do is throw on some Bob Marley. I get those vibes and then I start dancing. And guess what? I'm coming out of that shower and here I am dancing along my day. And then I'm like, what's the next positive thing that's going to happen? So you're able to stack this positivity in your life. So now imagine something negative happens to you after you got out of the shower dancing to Bob Marley. Are you more or less likely to let that negativity sit with you? Less likely. Boom. I don't got time for that. I'm sitting here getting down with Bob Marley. So I'm curious, does anybody have any thoughts or questions about creating positive inputs for their lives to live a life of more positivity? If you want to unmute yourself or raise your hand, uh, you can do so. Otherwise, I'll keep the party go going and move on. Hey, Rob. Hey, what's up, Mike? Good. Living and loving, brother. You know how it is. Um, with, with that being said, like how – how do you, I guess, continue, you know, as you said, you kind of, you know, you, you start the train rolling with Bob Marley, as you, you know, when negativity comes, you try and push it off. But some of those days, man, some of those days are just brutal, whether it's, you know, especially now with everything that's going on. How are, how are you, I mean, some negativity is bigger than others, right? So how are you making sure that even that really, really big shit is still just kind of water off a duck's back at that point? Great question. So water off a duck's back, nice analogy right there. So, um, with it, I think one of the things that you're going to learn through all of this is to shorten the amount of time that the negativity sits with you. So that's what I've really gotten very good at. Like everybody else, negativity does affect me. Do I have bad days? Full days, no. Hours, yes. So what it is, is I become aware when I get on tilt or when negativity is around me because you can oftentimes feel it in your body. It's, it's a reaction where you're like, wow, I, I'm feeling this now. So what I know is I go back to almost my boot sequence and the things that I know serve me. So it's when uh, you lose a client, someone yells at you, you get into a car accident, you get into, uh, you get a parking ticket, any of these different things that happen in your life. What you wanna do is continually shorten the amount of time that you allow that to sit because so often we get comfortable being comfortable and we like to sit in the negativity because it makes us feel better for the emotions that we're feeling. It's almost one of those things of, um, you have to take more action to get out of it. So you know what, like panic likes panic because it, it justifies why you feel that way. So what I really like to do once again is, all right, I'm feeling this way. I'll turn on the music. And if the music's not working, then all of a sudden I'll change my environment. And if the change in the environment's not working, I'll listen to a podcast. And if the listening to a podcast isn't working, then I'll write something down. So this is one of the things where I really try and create as many different ways to get myself out of it. And I think this is something that's going to be extremely important for each one of you is we're going to be building a tool belt for yourself, for your mind, for your heart. Something where you know I can continu continually go back to this when X happens in my life. So if negativity happens, you say, boom, I remember on the first I am great call, Rob said I can do X, Y, and Z. Let me try X. Let me try Y. Let me try Z. If each of those don't work, what can you do? Let's go back to the beginning. Let me put on another song. Um, another thing that you can do is give yourself permission to not do what you think you should be doing. So sometimes when you're on tilt, and for me, I like to use negativity from like a poker connotation, when all of a sudden you just went all in and then you lost and you're like, oh my God, I'm on tilt, you can feel it. Um, say, you know what, for the next hour, I'm just letting go of this life. I'm gonna take a walk, you're gonna play Xbox, you're gonna go shoot hoops. You're gonna do whatever you want, but give yourself permission 
to not have to do what you think you need to do. Just, I, I believe it's more important for you to get your energy back on course than it is to say, I need to go now pump out 20 more calls. Does that make sense, Mike? Cool. Uh, fantastic question, by the way. So, um, all right, let's move um, this party along. Up next, so we've got, let me see here, Evernote, where are you at? All right, uh, number two is accountability. You need to be accountable for your time. You need to be accountable for everything you do, and you need to be accountable for everything in your life. And you also need to do the things you say you're going to do. This is both for others and for yourself. In the big area that I want you to work on is for yourself. Do you do the things that you say you are going to do? A very simple example for this would be, all right, you say, today I want to go to the gym. But then all of a sudden, six o'clock gets there and you're sitting on the couch and you're feeling all comfortable and you're like, you know what? I don't really feel like going to the gym. So you don't go to the gym. Well, guess what you just did? You just said to yourself, you know what? I'm not holding myself accountable. I'm going to let comfort sit in the way from where I want to go. So you need to be someone who, when you say you're going to do something, you keep that promise to yourself. And one thing that uh, one of my mentors, Andy Frisella, talks about is he runs his own business. And what he does is he thinks about going to work for a guy named Andy Frisella. So even though he's at the top of the food chain, when he goes to work every single day, he's like, man, I got to show up today because that guy, Andy Frisella, he doesn't want me slacking off. He doesn't want me doing negative things. He wants to make sure I do what I say I'm going to do. So what you need to do is increase your own standard for yourself in saying, all right, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And if you don't do it, here's what I want you to do. I want you to recognize it. So with the example of uh, working out or not working out. So you don't work out that day. And the next day you start to feel down on yourself. You're like, man, I, I wanted to work out yesterday, but I didn't. So step one in any of these instances, recognition is the awareness. All right, I recognize that yesterday I said I was going to work out, but I didn't. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not gonna beat myself up over it because we can't do anything about the past. But what you can do is every day and every moment is a new opportunity for you to recreate that trust with yourself. So you said, all right, yesterday I didn't do it, but you know what, today I am going to do this. And then you go and do that. Because once you do something once, that's where the positive momentum starts building out. And one way where you can really help adding more accountability for yourself is to publicly declare it. And this is something that you can do on social media. This is something you can do with your friends, your family, your wife, or your boyfriend, girlfriend, anyone else. Declare it and let them know. And I'll give you a great example of this. And this is something that I do all of the time because when I create content, I throw it out to everybody in the world and let them know. So I just created a 21 day challenge where every day for the next 21 days, I'm gonna do 111 of something. Push-ups, sit-ups, lunges, squats, you name it. So by putting it out there, one, I just let everybody else know that I'm doing it. So who am I if I don't go and do what I say I'm going to do? That's not how we get down. So having that accountability in there is a very nice, simple thing because if you're sitting on the couch and you're like, man, I don't want to work out today, but then I sit there and I'm like, huh, I put out my 111 day challenge. And I know that Don saw it and I know that Mike saw it. So if I don't do that, who am I for not living up my word? So boom, you put that out there. Let the world know you're going to do something. So here's the action item number three for you. What is one thing you're going to do this week? And I want you to declare it publicly. You can do this on social media. You can do this to someone in person or you can just write it down for yourself. And this doesn't have to be big or small. This doesn't have to be fitness oriented. What I want to work on with each of you is your ability to understand the micro things we're working on right here. So just on accountability, 
How are we going to make you more accountable? Let's just do one thing. So I want you to pick one thing where you say, all right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to declare it to someone. And then when you do it, I want you to reward yourself and feel how you do. How do you feel about that? And we can check in next week and see how you're doing. But it's a very simple way to work on accountability. And I'm curious, does anybody have any thoughts or questions about the accountability side of things? If not, um, we will move on to the next thing. Cool. So number three is action. Live in action. I want you to make this your default. Make this as something that is part of who you are, your DNA. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. It is actually this exact call right here. So for the last few months, uh, I've been working on building up I Am Great. And the foundation of it is, and shout out to my man Steve who's on this call, is at the beginning of this year, um, I worked with the team at Bold Worldwide as a high performance coach to help them with their success mindset, their habits and routines, to make them better in all areas of their life. And the results we saw were tremendous. Uh, it worked for them. It's worked on myself. So I know the things that I'm teaching and sharing work. So I'm like, all right, it's my duty to share this with the rest of the world, to let others be able to work on themselves and get better. So now it was up to me to go and create this experience for everyone. So I created a landing page for it. And I just kept going back and forth on the landing page copy. Is this good enough? Is it not? And I realized I was dragging my feet because it wasn't that I needed it to be perfect, but something was stopping me from releasing this to the world, this exact call right here. And I had to get to a point where I said, wait a second, Rob, you are slowing down your own growth and the growth of others because you're not living in action to actually making this thing live. And it was upon realizing this that I said, rip off that Band-Aid and say, you know what? Done is better than perfect. Let's get version 1.0 out there. Let's start sharing this stuff. And I did find a way to live in action and not delaying. So I want you to always default to action. If your mind says, no, I don't want to do this, you know what your next thought should be? Ding, ding, ding. If this says no, I should say yes and go ahead and do this. So action item number four for you. Take action on one thing in the next week. Maybe it's something that you've been wanting to do, but you've been holding off on doing it. Maybe it's something that hasn't even been created yet, but I want you to consciously say, all right, this is the one thing I'm going to take action on, big or small, to work on your action-oriented mindset. And then I want you to see what happens. A crazy thing might happen. You might live in action on that one thing and you're like, oh, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be in my mind, as I can attest to. It's once you live in action, all that negativity just goes, just goes away. You, just, you, replace, you replace inaction with action. Any thoughts or questions on the living in action side of things? If not, We'll keep this party going. All right, next thing, growth. Always be learning. This is part of your success mindset. And I have to give all of you credit right now. By being on this call right now, you're growing and getting better. So this can be books, podcasts, courses, live experiences, anything in the world to always be getting better. And for me, I'll go back to when I started my entrepreneurial journey for Bacon Sports seven years ago. And I was starting at zero. I had no relationships. I had no experience in the industry. Nobody knew who I was. And I was like, all right, I got to get better. How do you do so? So I started, I started to just audit the success habits of the most successful people. And I heard the same thing over and over again. The average CEO reads 60 books a year. And I was like, huh, I'm reading zero think I might want to teach myself how to read books. So just like that, for the last seven years, every single day, I've read 20 to 30 minutes every single day. And guess what happens? Stacks on stacks on stacks. You learn this and then you learn this. And what I want you to do when you start with this learning side of things is to learn things that are fun or enjoyable for you. 
So one of the biggest barriers that most people have to get past is when we learned traditionally, it was things that we didn't want to learn, where whether it's geography or history or calculus or math or English or whatever, you're like, how does this apply to me? I don't like this. This doesn't serve me. Well, here's what you do. Go and find a book or a podcast or a speaker that you relate to. Where you're like, oh, I do kind of like this. And then all of a sudden, you're going to turn yourself into Neo in the Matrix where you're like, well, I liked this. And then I liked this. And then I liked this. And you're like, well, what else is there that's out there? And all of a sudden, you start stacking all these different ways to learn. And then I want you to always be on the lookout for things that you can learn. Because in everyday life, in Nathaniel, I'll give you a great example. When, someone, when that person sent you that card that thanked you and everything, boom, there's a learning opportunity where you say, wow, look at this amazing thing that someone did for me. It made me feel good. So what I'm going to take from this is I have the opportunity to do what somebody else did for others. So always be looking. Um, in my sports creator world, you know what I've always done? When I watch the Dan Patrick show, when I listen to Bill Simmons podcasts, I'm a student of the game. I'm not just watching the watch to zone out. I'm looking and seeing what they're doing. I'm seeing how they're hosting. I'm looking at their setup, their microphones, their what they're doing. Always be a student of the game. To action item number five, pick up a new book, learn something new, listen to a new podcast. This week, I want you to learn one new thing. And this doesn't have to be gigantic, just the mindset of constant growth. So the last thing here, initiative. Be the one to lead or be first. Because here's the thing, getting started is by far the hardest part. So by design, if we know that getting started is the hardest part, guess what you should probably become an expert at? The hardest part. Because this is where the separator is going to happen in your life and with success. And once again, I'll use the example of, um, talking to Mark Cuban or raising my hand at that conference. I've done that enough times to where now I just know, even if I don't know the question, I just stand up, raise my hand, and I'm gonna go and ask. And doing this turns you into a leader because others are gonna be like, whoa, Rob, how did you know what to ask Mark Cuban? I'm like, I had no idea what to ask Mark Cuban. I just did it. And what this does, when you take initiative, it starts to build momentum. So this can be as simple as you going up and talking to a person. So remember at the very beginning, the question that I asked, tell me something awesome that happened to you in the last week. Well, guess what? You can now use this question to take initiative to meet someone new. So Mike Raziel, I know that this is something that you have had to learn for yourself based on what David Meltzer taught you to do, where can you give us the quick cliff notes of how you had to go into a hotel lobby and talk to people that you've never met before. Yeah. So, uh, David's a uh, mentor of mine, great dude. And that was one thing that he, uh, he posed to me. He said, Hey, you trying to, if you're trying to meet people, you go find a sports conference. You live outside of New York city, go there, find a sports conference or, or a conference in general, find the hotel that's closest by. Cause that's where most people are probably going to stay or even the hotel itself and just sit down in the lobby. You know, you could do work, of course, but sit down in the lobby and just start asking people questions. Hey, what do you do? Hey, how long have you been doing it? And just be more interested than interesting. Learn about who they are and hopefully find ways along the way where you can provide value to them and, and create a relationship. And Mike, how did that feel at the beginning when you got to do that? Oh, I got to do it and it was awful. Um, there was there was no enjoyment level at all from it, uh, but I got better at it and now it's it's easy. It's fun. It's kind of something that I enjoy doing and I'm pretty disappointed. I can't go out and do it right now. So hopefully when everything comes back, it's, I'll be right back on the train. So look at that maturation that Mike had for himself. He went from, this is horrible. I do not enjoy this to getting better to, wow, I, I, I feel bad that I can't do this right now. That is the power of initiative. So then all of a sudden you think to yourself, huh, if I can do this for meeting people, what are the other ways that I can take initiative? So if we think about your work or a work organization, you can volunteer, you can be the one to take notes, to do something. So be that person who sits in the front row, who raises their hand. When someone asks for a question, 
here's a tip for any of you who take um, live experiences or do courses. If someone says, hey, who wants to be the example? Or hey, who has the question? Immediately, I am always the very first one. Why? You're gonna get way more out of it than everybody who's sitting in the background being passive. So if someone's like, hey, we need someone to do something, I'm like, Boop. Rob's standing up, I'm like, what's up, let's go. Because now what you get to do is you get to create this world and that is the power of initiative. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is recap the six action items that we covered. So number one, tell me something awesome that has happened in the last week. I want you to ask this to at least one person. Bonus points for doing this for multiple people. Number two, create one positive input and visit it daily. Action item number three, what is one thing that you are going to do and declare this publicly? This is your accountability. Number four, take action on one thing in the next week. Number five, learn something new this week. And number six, I want you to initiate one thing this week. And here's the key to all of this. One is always better than zero. Do one of them because that's progress. For some of you, you'll do just one. And you know what? That's growth. Some of you will do more than one. That's amazing. And if you're a real baller, you're going to do all six of these things. This isn't hard. It's just intentional because by design, by you being part of this live experience right now, you are raising your hand and you're saying, I want to be better. I want to have a better mindset. I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to contribute to my success. Because guess what's going to happen? Stacks on stacks on stacks. Because this is just the first live experience. Remember, we implement at the speed of instruction. So you just learned six things that you can do right now to work on your mindset. Guess what? Next week, we're going to stack more. The following week, we're going to stack more. So just like Mike and learning to take initiative in the hotel, think about where he was on day one to where he was on day six months to one year later. The same is going to be true for your own personal development. So if you take these action items, I guarantee you will get better because that's how growth happens. And Steve, you haven't had a chance to chime in here real quick. Um, if we can get your audio, Steve, can you attest to the fact that when you do things that you will get better? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, your awareness uh, is leveled up. Um, you, you're a lot more intentional about your day. Uh, you're a lot more intentional about every moment of your day. And uh, yeah, uh, a lot of massive transition will happen over the course of time here for sure. Uh, that's why I'm back. <laughs> I'm uh, looking forward to uh, supercharging. So, and yeah. Steve is a great example. So Steve was part of the original Team Bold group that did the live experience for three months. So Steve learned firsthand what can happen, I, and the fact that he's back here for more should be a testament to all of this. So what I want to do right now is open this up to Q and A and dialogue. And you have the opportunity to ask a question about anything we talked about here, or is there something going on in your life right now where you say, hey, Rob, I've got a question about something. And remember, this is something that other people might have going on in their life as well. And this can be about any area of your life. So uh, if you want, uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask a question. So I'll jump in here uh, just because. Uh, you know, uh, anyway, so I am, I actually just, uh, enrolled in my capstone for my bachelor's degree. I finished my bachelor's in business, uh, in six weeks. Uh, my big question or kind of just talking, thinking it out loud. Uh, I obviously, I want a career in sports. I've been pushing for it. I've been taking certifications. I've been taking courses, all that. I'm at this fork in the road almost where I want to get my master's in sports and then I keep getting the pushback. No, maybe you should just do it in business and try to find a focus in sports later. But I feel like if I want the job in sports, I should kind of, like you said, or like we say in the skydiving community, just kind of cut away and go balls to the wall and, and get that master's in 
uh, sports management or sports leadership instead of doing an MBA and then going uh, elsewhere. I feel like that'd be a discredit to myself not to go go all in at that point. So the beautiful thing about all of this is I think you know the answer. And one thing you're going to learn is trusting your gut. And with it, remember, there is no right or wrong answer because both of these choices you have are going to take you down a specific life. But I'll just share with my own personal example that I could have continued on my life making good money selling digital advertising. And it could have been perfectly fine. But you know what I did not want to live with? Regret. I did not want to say to myself, if I had only given a chance to work in sports for my career, what could have happened? So ask yourself that. If you were to not take the sports path, how would you feel? And is this a decision that you're making or are you allowing others to sort of influence you there? Because remember this, Drew, um, I had zero experience in working in sports, zero. And I know Mike Raziel can also attest to this because I've worked with Mike one-on-one -on -one and he went from working a job he didn't like to working in sports. He's now hosting fantasy sports uh, podcasts and he's writing a book and all of these different things. So understand, Drew, that this decision isn't the ultimate end-all be-all. Either way that you do it, you can work in sports, but it's a matter of you taking the action to making it happen and not stopping no matter what else happens in your life. So you're gonna need to meet people. You're gonna need to create things. You're gonna need to level up. You're gonna have to do a lot of these things. Remember, this master's degree is only one tiny little part of this. I don't have a master's degree. I know so many other people don't. It can be a positive asset for you. It can build that confidence in yourself. But do what you feel in your gut is the thing that when you look back on your life, you say, you know what? I am happy that I did this because I designed my life. So think about it as life design. Does that help? Yep, absolutely. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Drew. Um, anybody else have a question? You want to jump in? This is your opportunity to ask about anything going on in your world, um, anything that we've learned uh, so far here. Um, otherwise, if there are no questions, and oh, by the way, let's go and reiterate something here. So moving forward, and Steve knows this oh so well, and Mike knows this oh so well, and Don knows this oh so well, that when you get the opportunity to be in dialogue, I want you to be able to take it. So on the next call, which is next Tuesday, same time right there, I want you to be able to come to the table and be like, I learned this, I did this, this didn't go as well as I thought, how can I overcome this? You need to be bringing things to the table all of the time. Why is that? That's how growth happens. If people aren't asking questions, then I assume you've got this all figured out for yourself. There's nothing going on in your world. You're like, you know what, Rob? I'm just all happy. I'm just here for good vibes. If that's the case, that's all cool and all. But remember, this is a holistic program that talks about every single area of your life. So if there's something that I can do to help you even a little bit, and remember, there's other people who might have the same thoughts or questions that you've got going on. So we will make that for the next time. Uh, the last part of this experience is something called the Miracle Morning. And what this is, is this is something that comes from Hal Elrod's book, appropriately named, The Miracle Morning. And what we're going to do is this is going to be about a five-minute guided practice to help set your intentions. So this is something where um, I encourage you to sort of, we're, not, we're done taking the notes at the moment, and be present with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with one minute of meditation. And if you haven't meditated before, that's okay. Don't worry about it. What I just want you to do is to be able to just use this for exactly what it's going to be. So we're going to start with the meditation. And what I want you to do is to close your eyes and to block everything out. Focus on your breath. 
in through your nose, out through your mouth. I want you to be in a relaxed state of mind. Go to your happy place. That place that mellows you out or calms you down. Now give me one deep breath. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna visualize a positive day. What's your successful rest of the day look like? I want you to visualize the positive outcomes, the warm responses. Use all of your senses, your sight, your sound, the touch and the feel. The more specific you make this, the better. Let these visions flow and relax inside of you. Enjoy them. Allow this to grow and expand inside of you. Now I want you to all open up your eyes. And what we're gonna do right now is an affirmation. And we're gonna do positive statements, declaring specific goals. And I want you to say this out loud. And we're gonna reaffirm to yourself why you are awesome and amazing. So say out loud to yourself, I am great. I am worthy. I am positive energy. I am love and kindness. I am flexible and fluid. I am immediate action. I am destined for greatness. Everyone is better off for having interacted with me. Money flows to me in abundance every single day. All right, so what we're gonna work on now is gratitude. So let's take a step back and cultivate a feeling of thanks and gratitude. And I want you to start to become more aware of the things you are thankful for. I want you to open up your heart because when you do, great things will happen for you. And what we're gonna do is we're each gonna share one thing that we are grateful for. And you can unmute yourself. Dawn, what is one thing you're grateful for? Hi friends. Um, I'm so grateful for my children. They're amazing human beings, but they've really adjusted, I think, quite well. So this whole school is changing. All the dynamics are different and they're kind of just still happy, go lucky. And I promise you, I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> that that's amazing. Drew, what are you thankful for? I'm incredibly thankful for uh, my wife. Every step that I've taken in this journey, she has been there supporting through long hours through everything has been, been there every step of the way. If for some reason I start to get down for something and she sees it, she'll pick me up even without me realizing that I'm getting to that point. That's amazing. Mike. What's something you're grateful for? Grateful for the changes in the weather. It's finally nice up here in the Northeast and I can work outside. So I'm uh, very, very happy about that. Amen to that. Nathaniel, what's something you're grateful for? I'm really thankful for my fiance, like 
this past week has been tough. Like my school dropped football and I got furloughed, but she's been there with me the whole time and just made it a little bit easier. That's amazing. Steve, what's something you're thankful for? I'm very grateful for my uh, friends and uh, my network and uh, growing connections. Very, very thankful for that. Grateful. I love it. And for me, I'm thankful for my family. As we speak right now, I'm down in Sarasota with my wife and her parents, and they're all so loving and amazing. So I'm so thankful for that. So what we're going to do now is a boost of positivity. And here is your quote of the day. One day at a time is the secret to building momentum. And what I'm going to do is share a book note highlight for you. And this comes from The Power of Consistency from Weldon Long. He says, it is critical during this process to simplify things so that we're focusing on just one or two actions that will move us closer to our desired outcome. There will be plenty of time to take care of other things, the other details. The key at the beginning is to get going and create momentum as quickly as possible. So the last thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna move around. And this is something that's gonna be very active. And let me know if you can hear this. Can you hear that music? Thumbs up, thumbs down? No, all right, well, if that's the case, I'll have to figure out that side of things, but we'll do this without music. So for the next minute, what I want you to do is to move around. And this can be stretching, jumping jacks. This can be punches, you name it. Anything that you want, just move your body. And this is something that you can always go back to. It's just one minute, but there's something beautiful that happens with action. All right, so we're gonna end this. Today is Tuesday, and Tuesday is your most productive day of the week because we are champions, we are the best, amazing things are on the horizon for all of us, so let's go, let's make it happen, yeah. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you for being on the first I Am Great live experience. The next live experience is going to be the same time, 11 a.m. Eastern, next Tuesday. And if you want, feel free to let someone know close in your life, a friend, a family member, a coworker about this. If you enjoyed this, share this with them because this is how we get down every single time. Um, by design, I'm keeping this lean at the beginning, but, on the suggestion of Dawn, I went ahead and created an Instagram account for this. So if you wanted to follow at joinimgreat, join which is the same as the website, um, we will be adding more content there. Right now there is absolutely nothing there, but let that be a testament to living in action. That was the first step, then we'll start building momentum. So. As we end this, let's end this the same way that we started this with three claps. So we're all gonna do this together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Rub this good intention in. Sending those good vibes and positive energy your way. Thank you for attending. Have yourself an absolutely amazing rest of the day. And if you all want to give a goodbye, you can. You can unmute yourself and we can bounce. Goodbye, Everybody friends. Have a phenomenal Bye, day. Bye, everyone. Hey guys. <laughs> Take care. Have a great week.